Hi, we're here to show you how PCAN helps you move from a more reactive BI-centric approach to predictive analytics rooted in data science. That way, you can extract more value from a much wider range of data and use that information to predict customer behavior on an individual level. What's holding most companies back from this approach is not the AutoML process, but rather the challenge of retrieving all that data, doing the data engineering, and flattening it into a data set that machine learning algorithms can actually ingest and read from. PCAN enables non-data scientists to achieve all that within a single platform by automatically connecting to the relevant data sources, identifying what the company wants to achieve, and performing some simple, low-code operations that generate real predictive outcomes. The PCAN approach starts with what we call the predictive question. These words allow you to easily communicate the purpose of your model and identify some of its key parameters. So, for example, it's not just about trying to classify an upsell, it's about predicting the likelihood of a customer who made a purchase in the last 30 days to make an additional one within the next 90 days. And once you're armed with that information, you can take concrete business actions like prioritizing the activities of your call center, pushing a particular promotion, prioritizing marketing spend, and so on. As you can see here, we provide a variety of templates that are tailored to different types of predictions. This makes it much easier to collaborate with business stakeholders who may not know what a binary model is, but still need a clear way to define their goals and be part of this model building process. To kick things off, you're going to create a connection between PCAN and your data source. One of the beautiful things about this process is that we import raw data directly into the platform. The other thing is that we've built dedicated connectors so it's super easy to create new connections to your data. Here you can see the schema and metadata for a connection that's already been added. You can see which columns have already been imported and easily sync new data when you want to retrain your model. At this point, it's also worth noting that if you schedule recurring predictions, each job will automatically trigger the retrieval of new data to the platform. And this is how we do it. This next step is really our key differentiator if you compare PCAN to other AutoML tools out there. This is how we transform your predictive question and the data you've imported to the platform into an AI-ready data set. First, you'll choose the template you want to use, let's say upsell, and this will reveal the predictive question, which you can refine and which acts as a sort of overview of your model. Then you'll see the variables that define your model such as the time period you'd like to make predictions for. You can easily adjust each one of these variables, and this modularity is really one of the ingredients to PCAN's ability to be super agile, because you can start in one place and then sit with your business stakeholder and make adjustments based on what they're hoping to accomplish. What you're really doing is preparing an AI-ready data set through data transformations, and it's based on three key elements. We'll switch over to SQL mode to show you how it works. First, we have the entity query, which defines the population you're making a prediction for at a certain point in time. As you can see, it's all based on SQL, which many analysts are already proficient in and comfortable working with. And while you're working on each query, you can connect to all the relevant tables that have been imported, even if they're coming from different warehouses, and can also do a quick preview to see that the query results actually make sense. The second main component is the target which is simply the behavior we're trying to predict. In this case, an upsell, or more specifically, an additional purchase within a defined time period. So until now, we've been adding basic information to the model, but for learning to occur, we'll need to include all sorts of data about customers and customer behavior. This is what we call attributes or feature data. You can do that by adding any tables that contain relevant information. Here, for example, you could pull in customer support interactions and then select the relevant columns, the join column, and since it's a transaction table, indicate that there can be multiple records per customer. Now, every time you change something, you can run validations. And our checklist can detect all sorts of things that could cause training issues, like if you have duplicate columns or if your records aren't evenly distributed over time. Once you're finished with all this data prep, you'll click Train Model to kickstart the training process. Once it's complete, you'll get a notification that the model is ready and you'll gain access to this performance dashboard, 
which is based on the 10% of training data that's used as holdout data. What we do is set this data aside during training and then use it to test the model's predictions against actual historical records. This gives us all sorts of metrics post-training that we can use to gauge model performance. One thing that's also really important to note is that PCAN's default dashboard has been designed to be as clear and useful to non-data scientists as possible. For example, it shows aggregate performance on a higher level, but also allows you to drill down into specific predictions and the impact of features on them. So the first thing you'll see is a Venn diagram. It's another way of looking at a confusion matrix and we came up with it after doing a lot of research with less data science savvy people. The gray circle is the entire population of the holdout set or what we call the test set. Since this is based on actual training data, we do know how many people actually performed an upsell and that's represented by the red circle. Within that, this purple section represents people who not only performed the upsell, but were predicted to do so. That's what we call detected correctly, or in other words, a true positive. Falling just outside of that is this turquoise section, which represents people who were predicted to upsell, but actually did not, and were thus detected incorrectly, otherwise known as false positives. And of course, everyone who falls outside of these circles neither performed the upsell nor was predicted to do so, so they were correctly ignored. What's really cool is that you always have the option of adjusting your model's threshold, which is the cutoff point for classifying predictions. As you can see here, PCAN makes it extremely easy to fine tune the threshold so you can decide whether to take a more conservative approach or a liberal approach in your predictions. Of course, that really depends on your use case and what you want to do with this information. For example, are you going to invest a lot of money into targeting each customer who's predicted to upsell? Naturally, these kinds of considerations will impact how accurate you wish your predictions to be. So it's actually a business decision and not just a data science decision. As you adjust the threshold, you can actually visualize the impact it has on your model's performance. This includes the Venn diagram, and it also includes your precision and detection metrics. When it comes to detection, some of you may be more familiar with the term recall rate. Without getting into too much detail, these metrics allow you to measure and optimize your model sensitivity to both correct and incorrect predictions. Down here, we can see the predictions over time, and this is super important for predictive analytics. You're now looking at predictions for a trained model, but once the model is deployed, you can continue to see results on an ongoing basis. That way you can keep a lookout for a drop or drift in performance and see if the model's working properly. So you can act on it if necessary. At PCAN, we've really made it a priority to create transparency around the predictions themselves. In this feature importance panel, you'll see the top 20 features that contributed to your model's predictions. This ranking is based on SHAP values, which we calculate individually for each feature. This way, you can easily understand the model and why it made certain predictions, and you'll also see whether certain information you fed it to the model was impactful or not. At this point, it's important to note that PCAN generates all features automatically. We start with hundreds of engineered features and go through several iterations of feature engineering, some before training even occurs, so we can narrow it down to just the most impactful ones. As you can imagine, once you know the top 20 features, you can begin to take action quite easily. Lastly, if you scroll down, you'll see an aggregated view, which shows an example of how the actual predictions will look. You'll see what was predicted, and since this is training data, what actually happened. You'll even see the top features that contributed to each of those predictions on a customer level. All right, before we wrap things up, a huge differentiator with Pican is that once you have a model, you can export the results very quickly back to the relevant business system. For example, you can set a weekly or daily prediction job and the values or scores will be sent to your marketing automation platform. So you can close the loop quickly and even conduct experiments without the help of a data scientist or a machine learning engineer. To give you a quick look at how it works, you can schedule when and how you want the predictions to be sent by choosing the frequency, choosing the destination and so on. And then you can see a log of your predictions to monitor that everything is going smoothly. 
your predictions will not only be sent to your destination, but they'll also be pushed to your dashboard so you can see how your model performs on an ongoing basis. And that about wraps things up. We hope this video shows how PCAN provides an end-to-end -end infrastructure so you can create machine learning models without all the heavy lifting and data science expertise. It's really as simple as loading your raw data into the platform, defining your data transformations, and configuring your outputs. Plus, it's super easy to monitor and retrain your model so you can improve its performance over time. Thanks for watching.